This is not Alan. Whilst considerably shorter than our mighty orange vessel, it's a fair bit wider and still claims an eye-watering 50-person capacity. Alan's old yard down near the River Thames estuary has been home to a number of lifeboats over the past months, and apparently this channel has something to do with it. They are a welcoming bunch there, unlike some snobby marinas and yards where lifeboats are spuriously banned. Perhaps our various governments can dedicate time that's certainly not needed to tackle myriad existential threats to instead creating specific legislations to ban this sort of outrage and discrimination. Anyhow, I escaped the more settled, pleasant Scottish weather to be presented with this. The deluge finally ended, and I was able to finish the internal layout of my container workshop and say a brief hello to the other locals. Aside from making some shelving and work surfaces, really I was there for Alan. This is where the bulk of my large items reside, and I'm fetching some 6 metre lengths of fibreglass moulding and metal tube that have been waiting patiently for their moment of action for well over a year. I think I ended up with more plastic packaging than actual product, but eventually we triumphed with all the marking up and cuts with the drop saw. At very least, they are a size at which I can now drive them up to Allen near Edinburgh. These lengths of GRP channel and solid flat bar are to be teamed up with this sturdy GRP grid walkway, and people of the channel, we now have the ingredients for the long overdue stern platform. The walkway, which is ideal as it's stiff, light-ish, strong, self-draining, anti-slip and won't corrode, comprises a pair of off-cut sheets I was gifted. This means it needs tidying up and reshaping to the right dimensions, taking off the sticky out bits and the wider of the two cut slimmer. The strong winds are rather useful as a dust removal system as the mini grinder continues to deliver results its £30 price tag would not suggest should be possible. For this job I've managed to dig out a tube of some of the strongest one part adhesive you can get for glass reinforced polyester, i.e. fiberglass. 3M's 5200 is known in the boating world as the gold standard for truly permanent bonding, especially for fiberglass parts. Right back at the start of this channel I did a head-to-head -head adhesive test and did find others outperformed 5200 when bonding to steel, but for GRP it's still a good bet. It is not cheap, but luckily even the fast cure version, which this one is not, still gives you plenty of working time. It's not like some polymer mastic adhesive sealants that start to skin over the moment they exit the tube. I'm going to interject at this stage into this mesmerizing episode and this time it's not going to be because I'm asking you for something, instead it's just a cheers. After last time round when I mentioned that we were a little bit short of the battery target, I'm looking to get some extra 12 volt batteries for the boat, uh, the response was phenomenal and we have within hours reached the target, slightly gone over actually, and so I will, I will of course apportion any extra funds to other important jobs that are going on. Uh, but there are some split charges and cables and all sorts of things that go alongside the batteries. So it's the batteries plus all the various accessories. Thank you for that, that was really pulled out of the hat and it's made a big difference. I've had quite a lot of problem actually sourcing those particular sorts of batteries because apparently the demand for those big uh, 210 amp hour ones is quite low. So the time that it's taken for me to actually do the sourcing means that having the money in the bank and ready to go was, was super important. So thank you for that. And I'm going to segue seamlessly onto two small teasers for future bits that are gonna go on board Alan uh, before we go back to the main episode itself. So right here is, this thing, it's a large perforated tube of stainless steel. You can guess what that's going to be for. Let me just put it there without it falling over, otherwise it'll be a massive bang. And also over here, there is one of those. Some of you may be familiar with these. Um, it is known as either a rocker stopper or a flopper stopper. And this one is actually about to give birth to many, many, many more. And you can probably work out what this is for, maybe the tube less so. Right, back to the episode. That's a very quick and effective method to uh, get rid of £25 worth of gunge. Back outside, the components are ready to fit together, although I'll make the final cut to either end in one slice when the adhesive has cured and it's all one structure. I'm going for the maximum width I can get away with without sticking out either side, and so we can make the best of potential space back there. 2.2 metres or just over 7 feet. I could make an overhang, but that's greedy and we'd probably end up bashing into people in marinas. One small smear of wet adhesive is dealt with using a wonder wipe. I yoink the brackets and brace fittings out the way for now, teasing you I know, and set about neatening up those ends. For a few days I was down to my incredibly old and basic jigsaw, as the better one died and the replacement was not with us yet. 
Clearly, glue alone is not enough for something that we are to stand upon over the ocean, so some holes are needed across each half of the platform. I'm keeping the ends free of bolts, as that's where the handrail supports will end up, and I'm not talking up the nuts too tight, as although glass fibre has good compressive strength, it's still possible to crush and damage the laminate if you really go to it with excess gusto. Alan doesn't like excess gusto, although our newest Wonderment channel member, Ray, certainly must do. Hello Ray, cheers for coming aboard. There's going to be this gap, so we can reach down and access the transom, rudder and so on. Of course, there'll be a secure hatch, so we don't lose any careless crew members along the way. And I'm doing this. To make sure there's no chance of a crush, I think I might some breaks. Okay, yes, the wind again. I shot this at the same time as the last batch of windy footage, so please don't shout at me. Or at least don't shout about me about this in particular. This insert is going in to resist any compression or flexing in the middle section, and I'm just bonding it in flush. The transom at Alan's rump is not straight, as we know, so the platform edge that meets the boat won't be straight either. I'm measuring how the step grating will fit in, and then cutting the right numbers of squares out so it matches up with minimal gaps. Most of the platform won't be stood on or otherwise worn or abraded, like the underside, so I'm just single coating the inner surfaces for appearance's sake. I'm sure as hell not painting each square interior surface with a brush. And for strength and stiffness, we need a bridging plank here. Offcuts of the flat bar will do, and the same sort of bolt through fixing is spot on. Of course, we apply the same sort of cosmetic and functional standards aboard Allen that would make the Samson Tally Ho lot proud. Two peas in a pod. So, I'm carefully finishing the ends but not quite combining it all together yet. We need to do some more serious painting, this time with tough primer and top coats, as we don't want it looking a mess once a few people have stood up there as we thunder across the oceans once more. Finally, the forward edge brace can go on, and we're starting to get near the end of this epoch-defining piece of maritime design and manufacturing. But there's more. There's always more. We're using four brackets on the edge of Alan's stern, and they need a solid piece of fiberglass to bolt through. Clearly, this grid pattern walkway doesn't offer that, so we need to fill in some of those empty squares, and not just with resin or something that could fracture easily. No, nope, I've sealed the bottoms with tape, half filled them with resin, then squished in some tightly folded glass fibre cloth, let it wet out properly, and then topped each off with resin. After the cure, a grinder was deployed, naturally, to get the quality finish we all know and love throughout all my projects. Next time, we relentlessly motor onward and fit the brackets, handrails, and so on. Plus, I weld, and get very cross at these guys. Bye.